station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is station. I am ready for the event. Good morning, America. This is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Gio Benitez at ABC News. How do you hear me? I hear you loud and clear. I am ready for the event. Oh, Commander Man, thank you so much for joining us from the International Space Station. Such an honor. You've been there now for just over a month. First, tell us what's it like to be up there right now? In one world, absolutely incredible. I had some pretty high expectations and they have all been exceeded. Uh, it's a very busy on board the space station with science and spacewalks, uh, but it's also very enjoyable and an incredible experience. Commander, you have been training for this moment for almost 10 years now. So what was it like to step foot on the International Space Station? Well, I didn't actually step foot. I kind of just floated through the hatch, which was <laughs> an amazing experience. After all those years of training, it is really an uh, overwhelming sense of emotions. There's, you know, excitement. Uh, there's a lot of pride. Uh, there's a lot of anticipation for all the uh, exciting work that we have ahead of us on board the space station. And so many around this country are looking at you with pride because you are a first, right? The first Native American woman in space. What's it like to be a first? Do you feel a sort of weight on your shoulders? Uh, you know, I think it's uh, great that we recognize first um, anytime they happen throughout the world. It gives a good message to the rest of the world and, and specifically to the younger generation that there are opportunities for all in this world. Um, and I feel very proud uh, to represent all Native Americans in space and uh, just to represent my country and humans in space as well. When you were growing up, did you look at the space program and say, hey, maybe I can be the first Native American woman to go there? Uh, to be honest, I did not. I was certainly enamored with uh, space and, and science, uh, but that was not something as a child that I realized was an opportunity for me. It wasn't a little bit till later on in life that I realized that the path to becoming an astronaut is something that is feasible and something that I would like to go after as my dream. You are one of the few people who have gone to space. And that is an incredible feat because not many humans have gone to space and be in that room where you are right now. What is your message to the young people who are watching you right now, especially young women? It is such an honor to be in space. And my message to the younger generation is to dream. The first part is to have these ideas and these concepts in your mind of something that you really want to do and that you're passionate about. And then you need to figure out and visualize that path to get there. That starts with a good education, and it also starts with relying on people around you that will help you throughout your journey in order to achieve your dreams. It's something you can't do on your own. It's something that family and friends and support of other loved ones will help you along with. Commander, a lot of folks don't understand the kind of science that happens there on the International Space Station. What are the projects that you're most excited about that you're working on right now? We have over 200 experiments that we're conducting on board the International Space Station. A few of the upcoming experiments um, have to do with human science, uh, specifically a vibro fabrication facility, which is actually growing 3D or printing 3D human cells in space. Because of microgravity, we can produce these cells in a better, more truer form than we can on Earth. And I really enjoy that because the applications involve humans in space and exploration, but will also benefit humans back on Earth. We just saw that incredible Artemis One launch to the moon. Is that something that you hope to be a part of too? Absolutely. I hope the entire world wants to be a part of the Artemis program. As we move forward to the moon, it's really the building blocks for our future exploration to Mars. And I think there'll be a role that each and every one of us can hopefully play in those missions.
You know, I was speaking with former NASA astronaut Katie Coleman, and she told me what a different world it would be if we had seen a woman walk on the moon. And now that very well may happen. Absolutely. I think that that is a very uh, true possibility. We have such a diverse office in the astronaut corps now. I think you'll see all different types of uh, people walking on the moon in the near future. You've got several months left there on the International Space Station in zero gravity. Uh, what are you most looking forward to? There is so much to look forward to, and I feel like time is moving so quickly. I want to capture it all, but we have a couple spacewalks uh, coming up that will keep us busy around the holidays. We have another cargo vehicle coming to visit, and of course, a lot of science on board. Uh, personally, I plan to also spend some time just looking out that cupola window at our beautiful planet Earth and being thankful for everything that we have in this life. Has it changed you to see the world from that viewpoint? I think it drives home some concepts that you're aware of. Uh, you're aware of the concept that Earth is, is an incredible, fragile little ball floating in the universe, and that we have people around the world that can be united in our one planet Earth. I'm aware of those concepts and you think about them, but when you're actually in space and you look back at the planet and you see just that fragile atmosphere, it really drives home that point. And it makes it very, very true in your heart how important it is that we take care of our planet and how important it is that we unite as human race. Was there anything that surprised you when you got there to the International Space Station? You've got, you've got to live life very differently, don't you? <laughs> You live life very differently, yes. It's surprising um, how it takes you a couple days just to adapt to microgravity, to floating around where you still don't bump into things, just to uh, feed yourself and not lose all of your food when you're uh, sitting in node one trying to enjoy your meal. Uh, but your body gets used to it, and it's still fun. I still smile every time I float through the lab and just marvel at the, uh, the idea that I'm actually in microgravity. We know that you are on the space station now with your Russian colleagues, and we know what's happening here on Earth with Russia and the United States and Ukraine. What's it like working with your Russian colleagues there now? On board the space station, I think we have a very unique responsibility to maintain focus on the mission, and that's exactly what we do. Uh, we work closely with the cosmonauts. In fact, they had a Russian EVA yesterday that was very successful, and we helped them with some of the transfer of those tools. We have a good working relationship on board, and we focus on operating the International Space Station and conducting their science, and uh, that is uh, our mission of focus. Commander Mann, thank you so much for joining us. Such an honor. Thank you very much. It is an honor from the International Space Station. Godspeed. Station, this is Houston AS ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you to all the participants from Good Morning America Station. Please stand by. We configure video and audio communications.